Hey, it's Kishore from Tested, and I'm excited to share with you some of my favorite things from 2016, running the gamut from technology to science to science fiction and fantasy, some of my favorite passions in the world. And if there's one item that made the biggest difference in my day-to-day -day life, it has to be the Amplify from Ubiquity. The Amplify is a wireless mesh home router system. And this 2016 might be the year of the wireless mesh system. Uh, and it really shone through at home. I've always had problem getting constant wireless signal throughout my house, and this solved it immediately. Uh, this is from Ubiquity, who has a long track record in making great wireless products. Here's the base station, which looks incredible. It actually has a touchscreen interface, and these are the extenders on it. Basically, since I've gotten the system about three months ago, I haven't rebooted it once, and it gives me coverage throughout the house. This is the HD system, which is probably overkill for my square footage, but man, I have consistent wireless wherever I go, whether I'm on the toilet or in front of my computer, uh, it makes my life a breeze. But let's talk a little bit about science. I have a young one at home, and typically I'm not a fan of subscription boxes, but this year I stumbled across one of the best science subscription boxes that I've seen. This is the Little Passport Science Expedition Kit. Each month they send you a comic that's loaded with a couple different science activities uh, in it. And this month had Strawberry DNA Extraction, which is not a typically a complicated series, but I love how it's presented through the form of a comic book and then a beautiful illustrated guide of the step-by-step uh, uh, instructions that you have to go through to take a strawberry, mash it up, and extract a visible piece of DNA from it. It's really great if your kid is between the ages of about eight and 12. Quality science that you can do at home along with them, and you just can't beat the comic book. Uh, the leader of the Little Passport Science Initiative is uh, Michelle Hublinka, who used to be the education director over at Maker Faire and Make Media. So you know there's gonna be a quality level of tinkering that has to go into making these kits a reality. But if you wanna take a level up from maybe uh, a at-home science activity, meet this. While it looks like a sheet of paper from over there, this is actually a microscope. This is the fold scope that was born out of the lab of Manu Pakash at Stanford. And his idea was how can we make a microscope that costs less than a dollar so that everyone around the world can access the world of the microcosmos. And when you fold it all together, it looks like this. Um, and this is a slide of a spider leg. Uh, and this is it folded up and there's a lens here right in the middle. And you can make some pretty brilliant videos. This is a video I shot of that spider leg close up just using my cell phone. You basically use some magnets that come in the kit and attach it to the microscope itself, and it produces pretty stunning imagery. And the idea is that this isn't the greatest microscope that you can buy off the shelf, or even the greatest microscope that you can buy that attaches to your cell phone. But at somewhere between 50 cents and 60 cents a microscope, this can really get out into the world, particularly field locations, and allow you to do microscopy on the go, as opposed to a lot of the kits that are bulky and difficult to use. Now this project is, is just finishing its Kickstarter, but the product will be available in 2017 for pre-order. Okay, probably done some microscopy. You're past the, the stage of doing some basic DNA extractions. You want the frontier of science, and here it is. Welcome to the first ever CRISPR-Cas9 DIY kit. Uh, for those that know, CRISPR is a system to edit DNA um, within cells. So you can take bacteria and edit their gene structure directly in order to make pretty significant changes in its behavior. This kit came out of the mind of Josiah Zayner, who's a biohacker uh, here in the San Francisco Bay Area, who's now selling a kit that comes with some dried E. coli, um, some plasmid RNA, and all the other components that you need to basically start by uh, growing bacteria on a media plate, you first develop the agar, put it on the plate, inoculate it with the bacteria, then you go through the process of actually editing it through pipetting and um, uh, some combinatorial techniques to finally grow a bacteria that can 
grow on the media when it, in its initial form, couldn't before. This is a pretty fantastic hit. It's definitely a little finicky, but this is the edge of science. CRISPR-Cas9 is one of the hottest uh, science techniques that's going on right now, and this is a way to take the lab to your home. It's definitely not for every beginner. It's certainly uh, an interesting endeavor, but wow, when you get it to work, you have really edited bacterial DNA uh, in a way that makes a tangible, visible difference. Going into the world of science fiction and fantasy, I definitely am a huge fanboy when it comes to Firefly. Firefly is one of my favorite series, and normally I'm not a fan of how a lot of these series have translated into the world of board games, but Firefly the Game, which has been out for a couple years, is the first departure. I got this for my birthday this year, and it is one of the games that I can't put down. It's lived in in the Whedonverse. You get to be the different characters, take on a job, uh, try to survive the verse while avoiding the Reavers and the Alliance, it changes every time I play. There's different missions. I never feel like I'm playing the same game twice. And it's intricate. The games usually last two, two and a half hours. And I deeply enjoy it, especially as a huge fan of the Whedonverse and the Firefly fly genre. I may never get that series reboot that I've been looking for, uh, but I can at least have it live on uh, through the board game. And finally, a couple book recommendations. Uh, my favorite science fiction fantasy book of 2016 was All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Andrews. Uh, partially because it's one of the most lighthearted science fiction fantasy books I read all year. It's a story of a scientist and a magician having a romance, and it's set in San Francisco. So I was delighted by all the local references that pop up. Uh, and it's just sort of upbeat and fun. And while works of A.K. Jemison and uh, James Corey probably got more attention and, and highlights this year. I have to say this is the one that I enjoyed the most as a light, breezy read. Uh, and then finally, uh, loyal fans of This Is Only a Test know that I am a huge, huge Batman the Animated Series fan. And this work, uh, this graphic novel by Paul Dini, probably is my favorite comic adaptation of the year. Paul Dini was responsible for Batman the Animated Series in the mid 90s. And he wrote a graphic novel that was sort of an autobiography of a difficult time in his life uh, about a decade ago when he uh, dealt with depression uh, and really went through some low points personally while being at a high point creatively. And he uses the characters in the Batman mythos, Batman, the Joker, all of the famous archetypes as sort of voices in his head and on his shoulder directing his behavior uh, for anyone that's ever felt like they never fit in or the world around them was a little bit tougher on them than they thought it should be. This is an excellent read uh, and simply put my favorite graphic novel of the year. That's a quick tour of some of my favorite items from 2016, whether it be tech, science or science fiction. And I hope you enjoy them too.